Hey everybody and welcome back for another video. We got an exciting one today. We have baby chicks coming. Alright, so uh, we are getting ready to go pick up our baby chicks. And I'll let you know exactly what we're getting. Okay? I got the order sheet right here. So we are getting one black sex link. We're getting one barred Plymouth Rock. We're getting two Asia Blues and one Road Bar, which is a cross of the Bard Rock and Rhode Island Red. So, five total layer chickens coming our way today. And in order to get ready for those chicks, we got to get a brooder ready. So, we've done a similar video to, to this before. It was about almost exactly two years ago when we first got our four layer chicks. So anyways, two years later, here we are, and we are ready for five more. So we're going to bring you guys in. We're going to get the brooder set up and uh, show you exactly what we're using and, and how we set up our brooder. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy the video and come along with us as we pick up our new chicks. And uh, hopefully they all survive and, and prosper and grow. So come on in now. We'll get the brooder set up. All right, so here we are. This is um, last time we used a 104 quart uh, Sterilite Clearview container and it was okay, it was good, but it was a little bit on the short side when they started to feather out a little bit, they were able to hop up and hop out a little bit too early for our likings. And it was also a little bit small if we want to get into more chicks. Um, so. We wanted to get something that would expand our capacity to brood chicks and so we ended up with this Rubbermaid Roughneck uh, Tote and this is, uh, let me say, rubberne Rubbermaid Roughneck and it is 189 liters or 50 gallons. Uh, doesn't matter about the weather resistance but it says it's cold weather resistance, lifetime warranty. It says virtually indestructible. I don't know about that, but we'll take their word for it, I guess. But uh, anyways, inside we have lots of room. All right, pretty straightforward plastic storage tote. So again, that's 189 liters or 50 gallons capacity, and uh, yeah, it should be quite nice. Now, one thing I can do for you guys is grab a measuring tape and just give you the overall dimensions of the tote. Alright, so just to give you guys the dimensions of this in case you're interested in this specific one. It is almost three and a half feet long. That's 41 and a half inches. And width wise, you're looking at 20 and a half inches. So that's your length and width, and then as far as the depth goes, we're at about 16 inches. Alright, so there you have it. This is what we're going to use as our brooder as well for feeding the chicks. We have a medicated uh, chick starter mix, and this is 5 kilograms worth right here. We have two of these. And we found this really good with the last chicks, and it raised them right, so here we'll go with the same thing again. And again, it's uh, medicated. I think there is um, an antibiotic in it to prevent some uh, premature death, but we are okay with that. Alright, so for the most part, we are ready to start getting set up. We'll show you other elements as we add them in. But for now, I'm going to go get some wood chips and bring it over, and the kids will fill this up, and we'll start from there. Alright, so here we go with the wood chips. And for our purposes, we'll probably only want you know, three to four inches layer, layer thick. Uh, so I'll just get the kids to start filling it up, and I'll let them know when it's good. So go ahead, kiddos, fill her up.
think we're getting close to done. I think that should be good there. All right, Mr. Man, you drop the rest of yours in. And I will take these out of the way. All right, so now that we got the wood chips in the bottom of the brooder, the next step is a heat source for the chicks. All right, and you can find different uh, varieties of this machine, but this is called a brooder hen. And basically it's a plug-in warmer, which gives off a radiant warm heat down below it and simulates a mother hen's warmth for the chicks. All right, so the chicks are still at a vulnerable stage where they can't really self-regulate their temperatures all that well. So by providing a heat source, they can go in underneath it, warm up, and if they feel too warm, they'll come out and they can use that way to regulate their temperatures. But we're going to also have them in the house, which is a warm environment, so there shouldn't be too much worry of them getting cold. But we're going to open up our brooder hen, and we're going to put some legs on it, get it put down into the brooder, and that'll be ready to plug in and get it preheated as well. So let's put this together now and get it down into the brooder. Alright, so this brand name here is Titan Incubators makes this brooder hen. And I think this one is primarily made over in the UK. And uh, anyways, we used it two years ago for our previous chicks. Had no issues there at all. And so basically we're just going to use it again. Get this assembled. You get four legs come with it, like such. And then you got numbers on the side one, two, three, four, and five. Five different settings, but there's also multiple settings in between those as well. So you're not stuck to any particular setting, but the rule of thumb is, is that you kind of start off high, and if the chicks stay under there for a long period of time, it kind of means that they're cold, so you lower it down a bit. If they don't spend much time underneath there at all, it means they're too hot, and you should raise it up. So other than that, we'll just get the legs installed. And that just involves pushing on the clip, like such, and passing the leg through. So I'll start it at setting number four for now. And then I'll the rest of them are on the same. And there we are. So that's going to give them a lot of room to go in and out of there. More than likely we'll be lowering this down. I'm sure I could actually go down a bit more right now actually. But um, I will set it so that the four is at the level of the top lid. There we are. So, yeah, that's a much better height there now. And we can adjust as needed from there as I described earlier. All right, so at this point now, I'll get the kiddos to put this down into the brooder and we'll move on to our next item. All right, so I'll have the kiddos now put the mother hen down into the brooder. There we are. So we'll probably just have to turn it once to the right so that our cord is aimed towards our plug. And again, we're just trying to take out one side of the brooder and leave the rest for the chicks to move about, get feed, get water, all that good stuff. So here's the plug, and I will plug that in when it's closer to the time to go get the chicks. All right, so next on the list is the feeder. And um, Basically, like I say, we got the chick starter crumble, which is a medicated crumble. Typically with the larger bags, you'll get a little um, identity card and you know, an ingredient list. But in terms of the chick starter crumble, they just got it done up in smaller bags for those of us who uh, aren't breeding enough chicks to really need a, a big amount. So I'll just go ahead and get this opened up here now, and then we'll their feet are filled up. Alright, so we'll get the kiddos over again, get them to fill up the feeder for us, and then we'll get that placed into the brooder. 
Alrighty, so we got our five kilogram bag of chick starter mix. And I got a couple of cups for the kiddos. Uh, small for small, big for big. And then we just got a kind of generic Amazon poultry feeder, which involves a bottle that you fill up with your feed and then a little distribution tray down beneath with small openings for the chicks to peck in but not stand in. Alright, so we'll lay that aside and we're going to get this filled up by the two kids. Give the big bag to you guys. You guys dig in and carefully, without making too much mess, fill up the feet. Shake out the extra and then into Almost there. I think that'll be the last one. Yep. Good job. Thanks. All right. So now at this point, little feeder cover goes on. Get it lined up here. So I'll bring this over closer to you guys now, and you can see what happens when you turn it right side up. Okay, so here's our filled feeder, and our little distribution tray. So basically we're just going to kind of use gravity and centrifugal force to make the feed stick to the bottom as long as possible until it's right side up. And here we go. Uh, one. And a two, and a three, and there you go. Just like that, the feeder fills evenly all, all the way around, and the chicks can pick away at that and fill up on all the goodness. All right, so we'll get that put down into the brooder, and we'll move on to our last item. Almost last item. Last item will be the chicks. All right, so little man is going to get the feed put in the corner. This isn't even heavy at all. No. Perfect. Excellent, thank you. Now let's move on to some water. All right, so please excuse the dirty dishes in the next sink. But, uh, you know, we got a timetable to keep here, right? So anyways, this is our waterer. It's a generic poultry waterer. And um, same deal as the feeder, really. you got a bottle that you fill up, a distribution tray. And I don't know if I can describe how this works properly, but basically you have one hole down in the tray here. And when this is screwed on tight, there is an airtight seal down at this section here. So air cannot enter through that seal. Air can only get in through this hole. And in order for water to come out, air must take its place. So when the water starts pouring out of this hole and the water level is low, this hole is open. So the water eventually comes out, air goes in, Water comes out, air goes in, but eventually there's enough water that covers this hole and the air can no longer go in. And for that reason then the water stops coming out and you maintain a level in the bowl at the top of this hole where it stops the air. So that's how these vacuum seal gravity fed waterers work. As long as you've got a good airtight seal in the neck 
then and the tray is even, right? If it's pouring it over the side and constantly losing water so that air can get into the bottle, that's going to defeat the purpose. But you keep it level and it should maintain a water level just above this hole. All right, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead now and fill up this bottle with water. And then we're going to do the centrifugal force technique again, get it turned over and filling. And then little lady is going to get that put down the brooder for us. One thing to notice as well is that our water supply here at our house is fed by an artesian well. And being water from an artesian well, there's no chlorine, no fluoride, or any other added chemicals, just whatever's down in the rocks. Uh, I think our water has been tested and the most we have is a bit of excess calcium, maybe some iron. So overall our water is good to go, ready to drink for these chicks and uh, shouldn't have any chemicals that need to be either neutralized or evaporated. So, uh, you know, pay attention to your water quality and do whatever is necessary to get a good quality water for your chicks. But as for us, we've used our artesian well source before and that's what we're going to use again. Alright, so we'll get the, the lid put on here. Make sure our seal is done and intact. Okay, so we're all sealed up. So at this point now is when I'm going to swing it around. One, two, three. And then you can watch it start to fill, doing what I was mentioning before. It'll put out a little bit of water and suck in a little bit of air. Put out a little bit of water, suck out a little bit, suck in a little bit of air. And that will continue until the bowl is full to the level of that hole and it can no longer suck in air. And there we are. So it's reached an equal level of water with the top of the hole and it can no longer suck in air, so it can no longer release water. Alright, let's head over to the brooder, get this put in, and our setup is pretty much done. Alright, so here's a final look at the assembled brooder. So again, you got a container of some sort of an appropriate size. You got a heat source, whether it's a heat light, heat lamp. Uh, you got a food source and a water source. All in all, that should get you good to go with the baby chicks. And uh, so at this point in time, I'm going to plug in our mother hen, get that preheated for when we get the chicks home. And that way we can go right from the outdoors into a heated environment and uh, hopefully not have our little chicks get cold. Also, one final item that we need here, since our chicks come in a massive order, they don't come individually wrapped as ordered on the phone. So for that, I need to do up my own box for picking them up. And pretty simple, just a standard shipping box, and just going to put a layer of wood chips in the bottle. And that should be plenty. Alright, there we are. All in all, we are ready for some baby chicks. So let's go get in the truck, hit the road, and we'll see you guys as we get closer to getting our chicks. What's up everybody? We are in the truck on our way to go get some chickies and uh, anyways 
quite different day than last time we got chicks. Uh, last time we picked up layer chicks at uh, our local farmers co-op, the sun was beaming and uh, it was scorching hot and I'm pretty sure I ended up with quite a sunburn at the end of it. Well, today is quite different as you can see by the rain on the back of the window there. So uh, anyways, we'll definitely be a lot cooler today but hopefully I don't need to stand in any lineups in the rain. <laughs> that would be ideal. But off we go again. Let's uh, let's see what the day brings us. So, do we have some excited kiddos in the back? Yeah! Yeah. So, unfortunately, my wife couldn't join us this evening. The pickup time for the chicks is quite late, and uh, she had to work. So, uh, unfortunately, she'll miss out on this episode of uh, Chicken Pickup. But, as you saw, it's a pretty wet and miserable day. So, uh, I'm sure she'll survive. But we wish she was here. But anyways, we are arriving. Let's see what we do. Well, it looks like we're gonna get into the drive-thru, I would think. And uh Possibly pick up our chickens in the drive-thru. I'm not 100% sure. We shall find out. Alright, so we're still waiting in the drive-thru right now. And I can show you my rearview mirror. We still have more people behind us arriving. So it should be... Uh, Getting into the drive through soon. I assume that's the procedure. That's what everybody's doing anyway, so... We're into the herd mentality of it all. We'll let you know how it goes. Alright, we are getting super close to picking up our chickens. I'm not sure if they're providing the boxes up ahead there or... Or what's up, but uh, I think you just show them your shopping list. Right, this is our local farmers co op, it's where we buy our feed and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna set you guys up on the dash and uh, see what we can capture here of getting the chickens. And uh, yeah, soon be our turn. I hear lots of chicks. I hear the sound of baby chicks. It's so cute. Good. There you go. Anything else for you today? That's everything. Perfect. Where are they going? They're in the front seat? Yeah, do you want, do you got I a box? I'll grab that for you if you like. We'll probably have them in another one. Okay, you can keep that one. Do you want that box? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. 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 I usually record getting chicks and stuff, but okay. I can edit you if it don't matter. No worries, no uh, problem. All right, thanks. You too, see ya. We're gonna go to the parking lot and have a look at our chickens. Pass the box back then. All right, let's 
stop and have a look at our new baby chicks. All right. Daddy's going to have a quick look up here and then I'll pass them back to you. Alright, so here's what we got. We got a bunch of peepers. So I can tell already this is our road bar to Asia. Um, I'm thinking this is our black sex link and that this is our Plymouth bird rock. So that's my guesses for all those. Alright, so I'm going to pass these back to the kiddos now and we'll drive on home, get them to their water and food. Gently. Hello. Hello, sweeties. Hello. They're so cute. Yeah. All right, let's get on the road. All right, don't drop them. Put them back in the box. Okay. And hold on to the box. I want to hold one more different one. Can I hold one more different one? Okay, and then we got to get on the road. we got to get them to the water and to the food. Hello. Hello, baby. They're so cute. Alright, put them in there so we can start driving. Okay. You hold on to the box good so it don't tip over. Alright, let's get going. We got two happy kiddos. We got lots of little cheep cheep cheeps going on in the box back there. All in all, we are golden. Kids are loving the new uh, chickens. They're so cute. And also they're um, like dying away from each other. They're all like crowded up. They're all crowded up to stay warm. Hopefully the, the mother hen is all warmed up at home now. Yeah, lots of little cheep cheep cheeps. Gonna turn up the heat a little bit to make sure that they stay warm. They say it's a rainy old day here today. It's, uh, what is it? Oh, it's still 20 degrees Celsius outside though. So it's a warm but wet day. And we got some noisy little <laughs> little chickadees. So, uh, yeah, we're quite excited to have them. And the kids are already asking if, when these get old, if we're going to get more chicks. And I said, of course we are, especially, especially when we get into meat chickens, right? When you're talking meat chickens, you can have multiple batches a year, or just uh, you know, lots of them. So. We will definitely, definitely be getting the use out of our brooder and our coop and whatever else areas we have for raising chickens and bunnies. Speaking of which, we have still yet to start our bunny breeding program. And again, as of the video you may have seen, we may have inadvertently started our bunny breeding program. Uh, that's yet to be found out. But I do need to make a breeder box for uh, Smokey, just in case. All right, so the kids are going to continue just keeping an eye on the chickens there. I'll get us uh, home safe and sound, and we'll get to uh, getting these chicks out, get their beaks dipped in the water so they show where the water is, get them drinking. And uh, that's it. We are uh, we're good to go then. Chicks will be settled in for the night. We'll get the kids settled in for the night. And we'll and play with them for a while at the house. We'll play with them for a little while at the house once they get some water in them, get rehydrated, and uh, keep them nice and toasty. All right, so we'll see you guys at the house, and we will be introducing the chicks to the brooder that we set up. 
So stay tuned, we'll be right there. All right, so once again, here's our litter of ticks. All right, so five new layers. Hopefully they're all hens. Some of them there is a possibility of having a, a rooster in there. But hopefully they're all layers. So we'll go ahead now, we're going to be dipping their beaks just a little bit in the water, just to make them drink, and then they know where the water is after that. So let's go ahead and get them down into the brooder. Alright, so I'll start off with one, and that's going to be, this is our road bird. Alright, road bar. And a little pick of water. There we go. Get a little sip of water. A uh, little lady, if you want to uh, do the next one. Okay. Let's take this one here. Hold on. steady. And stick the face first down into the water so that its beak gets wet. Can't make its neck bounce off the top. You have to dip it right down like it's diving in. There you go. Give it, Give it one more little dip. I think it got something. There you go. Hey, Mr. Man, you think you can do one? Yeah. Okay, I'll just move out of the way. You're going to hold him nice and gentle, okay? You're going to dive his head down just his beak into the water. Let's see, did he drink? Oh, do that again. There you go. Good job. Alright, you guys do one more each now. Drinking it up.
Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our brooder all set up. Five new baby chicks added into it. All right, we got our hover brooder heater. We got our water, our food, our wood chips, and most importantly, our five chicks, which we hope will grow into five healthy laying hens. So uh, be sure to follow us along and see how these chicks turn out. Hopefully we don't lose any along the way. They all seem to be pr quite healthy and they've all had a drink. I think I even saw a couple of them have a little bite to eat. So, you know, if everything goes to plan, we'll have five more healthy chickens to add to our flock when all is said and done. But in order to follow along, you'll have to watch our next videos and we will include whatever we can to keep you up to date on what's going on here with us. So until that next video happens, hope you're happy, hope you're healthy, take care of each other, and, and peace out! out.